All right. Cool. Um, other questions? This dialogue thing's pretty neat. Isn't it? It's kind of fun. And I mean, it's, it's retro. Not by design, but you know, at this point, it ends up having that look to it, so that's kind of cool. So you can you can make a repository yourself and you can add members to it and give them whatever access you like and you can either do that under your your um so so you would want to do that under a new repository right so so make yourself a repo just for um your group and have one person in your group create it and then give access to the other people as as you know contributors or maintainers or whatever you want so that everybody can can read and write the files collectively but you're each going to have you know a copy of this on your local machine and then to submit the assignment for grading right one of you just make a copy of that that directory um, under your CSE 224 repo give it that name that we specified and and go ahead and push that over and then I can download that That makes sense. Okay. Uh, other questions on PA4, SLPs, other stuff? Is there a nice dialogue list or dialog box for like listing like like a table for like say listing appointments um so so there are ways that you can display the contents of a file and that's that's usually a a pretty good start because we can stylize files all kinds of ways um and then you can you can display the contents of the files so let me uh so there's no default like table dialog um are really nice. There's checklists, there's radio lists. Um Let's see what we got. So if you go under the second set of help. So box options um text tight with build list. Uh, displays two lists side by side. Um, that's overkill. Checklist, edit box. You might do it with a checklist and just disable the check boxes. Um, forms I haven't played with, but forms I think are a, a much larger world where you can start to, to stylize how you want things laid out in kind of a container box. Um, gauges are fun. Info box. But I mean, if you if you just have a f collection of things and you separate them with new lines and put that in something like an info box, um, that that would certainly work. Okay. A program box will run a command and and display the output of that. So if you have a script that's going to generate you know a list of options or something, you could do that. Um, But yeah, I think just a plain text box, but just put new lines between each line. And we'll we'll play around a little bit with awk and maybe said I'll show you how to do a few simple edits um, with that. But yeah, um, definitely picture this as spending most of your time in Bash. 
building up variable names, right? So, so opening a file and pulling the contents into a variable and so on and so forth, and then using, you know, one or two dialogue commands to do the actual display or the actual getting information from a user. But the formatting you can, you can mostly do in, um, in Bash, I think. Okay. So yeah, let's let's look at um, some other options in in dialogue. Um, so let me set this up. Oh, yeah, send me an attendance note while I'm thinking of it. So let's let's uh, let's write a script. We'll call this test one. And let's see. Looking for an easiest way to to um, to do input. Just an input box. Input box, text type with, okay. Um. All right. So um, a lot of a lot of dialogue commands will um, will generate some sort of uh, output information. For example, if you do a, a calendar dialogue, the user can select a date and say okay. The output of that command is the date that they selected. If you do an input box, you get a, a area that the user can type into and when they say OK or they hit enter, the output of that command is the text that they typed, right? And so it's, it's useful to be able to capture that in, inside a bash variable. So all of these commands, there's, there's something extra that we can do. We can add another um, output which, which looks like... Um, dash dash output dash fd I gotta type here so I'm gonna do an output fd which will um, say I'm going to change where the output of this command goes normally it goes to standard out right um, and so I'm going to do one two greater than slash dev slash null. Don't worry too much about what this means. The result of this is whatever the dialog command is going to generate will just go to plain old standard out. And so I can do something like answer equals back quote all of this stuff. And now if it says um, name and my name is Nick J now I have a variable containing whatever the user typed. And so you, you're going to do this kind of thing a lot. 
right? And this is for capturing um, dialogue output. Um, I noticed there's a lot of things like some of the calendars and menu boxes and such that do not just or give the the output to STD out, and you have to actually give it a flag of dash dash STD out to get it to work. I think this will do the same thing. I think this was the the version of that that I ended up on. I don't remember exactly why, but but this should dash do the same output thing. Dash FD, you're yeah, dash dash output dash FD space one space two greater than space slash dev slash null. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a pain to type, but that's okay. Um, so let's ask the user who they are. And we're going to put up a dialog box, and we'll say... Um, who are you? And we'll let them type, and we'll save their their result and name. Um, and we'll say birthday. Um, and let's put up a calendar box. So I'm going to do a dialog dash dash calendar, um, and I'm going to put a title, which will be. Um, when were you born? And um, zero zero. I don't know if I have to specify a default date, so I'm not going to. Um, and I'm going to put all of this inside back quotes and say the same thing. Dash dash output dash fd one two greater dev null. And a back quote. And then I'm going to clear my screen and echo hello name. You were born on birthday. This is junk code, right? This is just how we how we test a new command and figure out what it can do and kind of get our our uh, get our feet wet with it. So um so the back quotes basically any command that you type in bash if you put that command inside back quotes the command is executed but the output is captured and the output basically takes this part of my line so in this case I'm saying birthday equals and it will be equal to whatever this dialog command generates so if I just do a dialog dash calendar without capturing all of this stuff um, it pops up a calendar, and if I choose a date, then it, it displays that on standard out. So by putting that calendar command inside back quotes, um, instead of displaying it on standard out, it will basically capture it, and in this case, the statement will say birthday equals, and it will be whatever that output was. So just, just pure junk code, we're going to ask who the person is, let them type that in, capture that in name. We're going to ask them to pick a date from the calendar, save that in birthday. I'm going to clear my screen and then just say, hello, name, you were born on, and show what the birthday was. So it says, who are you? Um, Nick M. And then when were you born? And I was born um, on Monday. And so it says, hello, Nick M. You were born on the 1st of November, 2021. Now, if I want to, to do this like in PA4, Let's display this information in an information box for the user to see. So I'm going to say dialog dash dash info box. Um, and then I'll just display 
say that. Hello, name, your birthday is that thing. So now I can do test one. Who are you? I've got a weird name. When were you born? I'm born in the future. And it says, hello, blah, blah, blah. Your birthday is 30th November. So that's, that's a kind of basic setup. Um, you know, an example of using dialogue inside a script. Um, the zero, zero, I believe, is a height and a width. So if I, if I do um, dialogue calendar and I say 40, 40, um, So if I do zero, zero, it, it automatically sizes it. If I do 20, 20, I get a 20 by 20 box. So you can, you can force the height and the width. Zero, zero means just make it big enough to contain whatever text you have um, and figure it out automatically. That doesn't look like a 20 by 20 box. Well, text is funny, right? Because this is five. Um, a full oh, screen oh. is 80 by 25. So, yeah. I understand. Yeah. All right. So you, you play around with this on the command line. You try different commands. You figure out what you want to do. And then you start cobbling together a script, right, to do this inside um, a bash program, basically. And the main trick you're going to want to know are these back quotes for, for capturing the output of um of a dialogue so you can have the user type information you can have them pick a date on a calendar if we do a a um a checklist for example we can we can capture their selection and so on um so let's look at a checklist take out the calendar dialog. Let me take out this one. So dialog dash dash checklist. Um, make a selection. Um, and so zero zero or the height and width. And I'm going to say choose from from three possibilities, um, and so um, we'll say physics. Um, I don't know how this works. Let's try this. Um, So A, B, C, D, E, F. Interesting. Checklist tag item. between a tag and an item. Um, So, so you're going to have to figure this out. Um, but what I'm trying to do is make a checklist here with three options you can choose from physics, math, or art. And, and I'm not clear yet what the second field is. Play around with it, figure it out, or ask me later. But I'm going to display physics, math, and art. I'm going to make physics checked by default and math and art unchecked by default. 
And so if I run this, we've got, you know, the ability to choose any of these that we want. And when I say OK, I think it gives me a space separated list of, of the terms that you selected. So I can throw this inside, um, inside back quotes. classes the person selected. So test one, let's just do physics, and it says your classes are physics. And if you pick physics and art, it'll say your classes are physics and art. If we do all three of these, your classics are physics, math, and art. Um, so this is, this is just, um, this is just a different dialogue option. Jack, your mic's on. All right. Uh, for group projects, are there passable functions so we can work on different parts of PA4 without having a single file? Sure thing. Um, so you can you can make a script and you can run a script from inside, you know, Bash. So uh, let's do this. Um, So here's here's a script called display um, classes, which will make an info box displaying whatever argument you you pass to this program. So if I display classes, um, art, science, and math, right? It just makes an info box with with art, science, and math. And so in our test script, instead of doing an info box, I can call, you know, the, the script that my, my partner wrote called display classes. I can pass it the classes variable that comes from the checklist that I wrote. And it should, it should run this other script to display whatever classes were selected. All right, so there's physics and math. And if you want to, um, if you want to get results back from a script, what do you do? Well, you have that script output something to standard out, and the script that's calling it puts it inside back quotes and assigns the result to a variable. So, so. So let's let's make a um, let's make a separate script that just reads a set of class choices from the user, right? So this is a single line that that does a dialog box, um, and and creates this variable classes. I don't know if this is going to work. This is going to be interesting. This may not work the way I'm thinking. Um, hmm. I might be pushing my luck here. All right, 
right, we're good. All right, so here we're gonna just say classes equals read choices. And then we're gonna display the classes. So this is a script one person writes, this is a script another person writes, this is a script a third person writes. And we're passing stuff back and forth between these, right? So read choices will um, pass back a list of classes. It does that by sending them to standard out with just a plain old echo statement. But since I'm calling this inside back quotes, this script can capture that inside this variable. And then I can take that variable's value and I can pass it as an argument to display classes. So read choices is doing, you know, all of this business to create the dialogue, get the information from the user, and then it just does an echo. And display classes just takes whatever argument you pass to it, which is dollar sign one, runs that in an info box. So now we've got this thing broken up into pieces. I can pick some classes and say OK, and it creates an info box showing me the classes I picked. So it returns whatever it would output, question mark. I don't know what it and it are right now, because I don't think I saw your note in time. Um, but but um, read choices is creating one line of output to standard out, which is whatever this variable is. And test one is executing this script, read choices. And because of the back quotes, Classes will be set equal to whatever this script outputs. So yeah, it, it basically captures whatever whatever that script outputs. If I change read choices to, you know, not bother doing any of this, and just echo hello, then test one displays an info box saying hello, right? The way we call functions like this in Bash is basically we execute this script. Whatever this outputs to standard out, in this case, that's what this variable will be set equal to. So if you want to just pass back a string, just make read choices or whatever your script is. Output, you know, whatever string you want, which in this example was the result of, you know, choosing items from a checklist. Yeah, definitely different from C. Um, and this is, this is, you know, what we're doing with the dialog command, right? The dialog command normally takes whatever it discovers and it just sends it to standard out, but we're putting it inside back quotes so we can capture it. And then if you want to send back multiple pieces of information, you can start doing things like, you know, put out multiple things on one line with, say, a pipe in between them and then start parsing that out. And we can parse that out with things like awk, which I want to talk about um, probably right now. Um, but let's look at the, um, the date section. I'm waiting for a delivery, so maybe doing things like that. Um, all right, so let's let's look at uh, dates. Um, <coughs> let's look at dates. Dialog. Calendar. Um, choose a date, zero, zero. We can um, let's go to the Ides of March. All right, so I'm 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 going to pick a date here. I'm going to say okay, right? And this thing outputs the date to to standard out. So if I want to capture that date and do something with it, I can say something like D equals back quote. Right, 
add that extra switch for the output file descriptor. And now, I don't know, I'll just pick the 18th. And now this variable D is equal to, to this string. So, um, we have, we have a challenge. So if our string is equal to something like 18 slash 11 slash 2021, if you're, if you're doing fancy things with dates, like for example, you want to know all the dates in your appointment book that are in the future, or you're, you're giving the user the option of showing all appointments on a given date, or all appointments within the next two days, or something like that, it's useful to be able to take this string and break it into, you know, say, three variables, a day, a month, and a year. And we can do that using a command called awk. And towards the end of the term, we'll spend, you know, a few days just talking about awk. But, um, but awk will, will let us, among other things, take a string like this and break it up into pieces. All right, uh, let's see, question, do we use the source bash command to include other scripts like source test bash.sh? You can use source. If you use source, it's going to not create a, a separate bash instance to run your script. It's actually going to execute the lines from one bash script inside your current script. That may be something that's useful to do, but generally what we do is, is something more like, um, like this, where we just run a command and, you know, by just typing the name of a bash script, it executes that script, but it runs it in a separate bash instance. So any variables or changes made by this are local to that bash instance. When we come back, none of our variables have changed and so on and so forth. We pass information through arguments. We capture our information through, you know, this back quote trick. Um, if I were to say source read choices, it would actually pull in the source code for that file and execute each of those statements inside this bash instance. Um, I would tend to say, unless you're really clear on what the source statement does, don't use it, right? Just go ahead and run your scripts like this or like this, or like this or this. All right, so what, is, what does awk do for us? Um, so can't run it without any awk arguments. Um, awk is basically a way to take a set of input lines and split them into pieces. And let, let me show you a really simple example of awk. Awk, quote, curly bracket, print, dollar sign one, close curly bracket, close quote. All right, by default, awk is reading standard in and copying the results to standard out. So if I say this is a test, it says this. If I say I am Nick, it says I. If I say what is happening, it says what? What is happening? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, it says A. So right now, what this program is doing is it's printing the first word on each line of input. And I'm going to exit with control D. Now if I do the same thing, but I say print dollar sign two, and I say this is a test, it says is. If I say I am Nick, it says am. If I say what is up, it says us. So this is printing the second word on each line. If I have a line that doesn't have a second word, it just prints an empty line. So, so from this view, the main function of awk is to break an input line into fields and then let us print different fields. So if we had a date like 18th November 2021 that was separated by spaces, right, this would print out the second field, which for us is the month. 
And if I capture that inside back quotes, I can store that inside a variable. With me so far? Yes. So there's, there's a switch we can put on awk. We can do an uppercase F followed by a character and say that's the field separator. So if I say awk dash F slash, instead of separating words by spaces, it's going to look at a slash as something that separates words. And now if I say print dollar sign one, and I type in a date like 18th November 2021, it prints out the 18. If I say print dollar sign two, and I type in the same date, it prints out the month, 11. And if I say print dollar sign three, it prints out the year, 2021. So awk normally reads from standard in, right? It waits for me to type in something. Um, but if we pipe a command into awk, right, it will read standard in as being the output of that command. And so if I have an echo statement like echo quote 18th 11th 2021, and I pipe that into awk, dollar sign one, um, dash f slash, that gives me the day. If I do dollar sign two, it gives me the month. If I do dollar sign three, it gives me the year. So if I do something like this, d equals back quote dialog sign D is now that date that was returned by dialog and so if I do this instead of echoing you know a hardwired date I echo dollar sign D I can find the year or the month or the day that the person selected all right so let's let's try this Let's make a calendar test. So I'm going to print up a calendar. I'm going to ask them to enter a date, um, and 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 I'm going to capture the date that they type in. And now I'm going to do some of those awk commands. So I'm going to echo dollar sign D, pipe that into awk with a field separator of a slash. And I'm going to say print the first field. That's the day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture that into a variable. So split date into fields and capture each in a bash. So I'm going to say day equals back quote all of this stuff. All right, so what's going on here? I ran the dialog command with a calendar dialog. I captured the output in this variable D. I'm going to echo that variable, which is, you know, day, day, slash, month, month, slash, year. I'm going to put that into aux, say separate fields with a slash, and I'm going to print the first field, which will be the day. The result of this will be, you know, 18, if I pick a date on the 18th. The back quotes say, take that result, right, and replace this part of my statement with it. And so this statement will say, day equals 18. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the month and the year. And I'm just going to capture field 2 for the month and field 3 for the year. And then let's clear our screen. Let's just do some echoes. Um, 
So anything that's separated by spaces, you can basically treat it like a comma and an array when you use awk, right? The dash f. Anything that's separated by spaces is basically the next word. So yeah, it's like an array, exactly. And if you do a dash f backslash, then anything separated by, by or forward slash, anything separated by slashes is, is the next element in the array. If you do a dash f comma, then it's a comma separated uh, list and so on. Um, no, so if you don't print anything, it, it wouldn't produce any output. Okay. If I print dollar sign one space dollar sign two, it'll print the first field followed by the second field. And so there's there's a whole programming environment inside awk, and we will play with that later on. Um, but for this assignment, it's useful to be able to break a date up into fields. And so this is this is an example of how to do that, but it's also an example of some some you know, more heavy lifting inside bash i mean we've got a lot of stuff going on we've got echoes we've got evaluation of variables pipes we've got awk now we've got back quotes and so on so this is this is a lot of what we've been talking about sort of all glommed together in in one uh pretty cool example so so this should you know let the person pick a date on the gui and then break it up into these three fields and we'll just echo these as individual variables just to confirm that we've actually been able to uh, to do this this splitting. So let's make this runnable, and let's pick a date and. And we'll go with September eighteenth, twenty sixteen, for no reason. And you chose day 18, month 9, year 2016. That's my birthday. Awesome. Wow, that was weird. Oh, you were born in 2016. Are you done? Yeah, I was. Prodigy. All right. Pretty old to see this five. <laughs> so this, this is totally usable, right, inside PA4, but it's, it's also an example of something much, much larger, right, than just how do I split up a date. It's, it's um, a methodology you can use in general for manipulating variables um, and, and breaking them into pieces. The other thing you may want to look at is the date command. And date, you know, if you just say date, it just shows you what the current date is. But you can put all kinds of, of switches on this command to modify its behavior. So um, you can you can hardwire a date, right? So I could say something like date dash um, date equals um, you know December twenty fifth, twenty fifteen, and it shows me the date you know in the same format. Um, if this was actually what the date was. Normally, if I just say date, it shows me the current date, right? So, um, you know, I can see that Christmas 2014 was on a Thursday. And if I wanted to pick that out, right, I could do this. I could pipe it into off, print dollar sign one, and, you know, whatever date I specify in here, this command will now tell me what day of the week that was. It could be a handy thing to do, right? Um, so you know, maybe you want to do something special with weekends in your in your calendar program. So once you've got a date in some format, like month, day, year, or whatever, um, you could use the date command and figure out what day of the week it is. And you know, we can capture that in a variable by just throwing the whole thing inside back quotes. And now I've got a variable day of week that contains, you know, the day of the week this fell on. And I can put that in if statements or whatever I want to do with it. So, so be thinking along these lines, right, as, as you're strategizing on, on PA4 and what you want to do if you're in a group in particular and you're brainstorming ideas, right? You have all of these capabilities. Um, and the date command is definitely key. That will let you do all kinds of things, including um, display different pieces of a date. 
So you can display, you know, the century or the day of the month um, or the full month name and so on. But you can also display, um, let's see where it is. You can also display the current date in the form of the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. So if I say date plus percent S, that's the current time in terms of number of seconds since 1970, January 1st. If I do that again, it's, uh, it's eight seconds later. This is a really easy way to compare dates, right? This is an easy way to see, you know, if one date comes before or after another. Take the two dates, convert them to the number of seconds since the starting point, whichever one has the larger number, the larger value, that's the date that comes later. And if you want to know if, if a date's coming up in the next two hours, right, see the number of seconds corresponding to that date, um, see the number of seconds corresponding to the current date, and see if the, the date in question is, you know, 7,200 or less um, from, from the current date, right, 7,200 seconds is two hours. So, so the point of all of this, I think, is, is your programmers, right? Your computer science people, your creating programs. Um, you want to be thinking less and less in terms of what is the right way to do this and more in terms of how am I going to do this? Right? This is, this is Legos. This is Minecraft. You've got a set of blocks. You've got awk, date, dialogue, um, back quotes, echo, um, ifs, things like that. How am I going to put those together to do what I want to do? And really don't spend a lot of time, you know, Googling um, how do I tell if one date comes after another, right? Think about what you can do with dates. Think about, you know, the date command. Think about if statements and so on. And see if you can figure out a way to do what you, whatever you need to do for PA4. Or for anything that you're doing on a computer um, in general. And, and unless you really like, you know, reading Stack Overflow pages at 3 a.m., I think it's probably more fun creating solutions than looking for solutions somebody else has created. And, and part of PA4 is really an opportunity to kind of go down that path kind of as far as you like. Um, and you can, you can always, you know, ask questions. You can ask questions in class. You can come to office hours, whatever. Um, and I can point you to things like this, right? But, um, but don't, don't get too bogged down thinking like, I don't know the right command to do such and such, right? Take the commands you know and see if you can trick them into doing what you need to do. And the more you can do that, the more power, right? You have one magic wand and it can do all these different things. That's better than having, you know, a shed filled with a thousand magic wands and you have to find the right one to, you know, change water to oil or something. Yeah, reading Stack Overflow at 3 a.m. can be fun, I guess. Um, depending. All right, uh, send me an attendance note on the way out, and um, if I see you in 2.15, cool. If not, have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye. All right, bye. Bye. Have a good one.